Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello and welcome to our Coffee Break. Look who we have joining us today, the woman who needs no introduction, <laughs> Jean Bertrand. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, I don't think we've ever had you on our show, so I know, welcome, I don't think welcome. So. Thank you very much. Yeah. It was very nice of you to invite me. Absolutely. And I like your red coffee cup. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you're dressed for that today. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're so happy that you're here and you're going to talk to us about whatever you want, but certainly live for Evan. Okay. And, the, and yeah. what's going on there. Great. Yeah. yeah. What's your involvement with the organization, first of all? Um, I started with them, well, I've been a volunteer for many years, but I started officially with them in October as their executive director. They have gone through a process of sort of um, strategic planning and um, refining their mission and decided that they wanted to bring an executive director on board. So um, it's been great. It's been a very busy couple of months. I have to stop and think that actually that's a fairly short time, but, um, but it's a great group of people. Well, and, and you been in town for years. Uh, yes. <laughs> and raised your three children here. Four. Four. Yeah, four. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, One I, of them I, might have raised themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, like, yeah. A whole lot of girls. Um, yeah. 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 All girls? Yeah, so. all yes, girls? all four girls. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you've been involved in a lot of things in town, too. I have been. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, so have all of you. I mean, yeah. it's nice. Well, it's no, a, it's a great been. way to just feel connected to the community. You all have been really active. Well, your active whole family's been very well. involved from your kids yeah. being involved, giving back to I remember meeting your husband when Melissa was in like kindergarten, yes. and he was already a seasoned like soccer coach he at was that point. Soccer coach. And he was. I guess he was. I know. You know yeah. so yeah. it's, I it's think a whole he coached about a hundred soccer teams or oh soccer and basketball. Oh wow. together I mean, I together think over the years. Most people town from school committee, but I don't know if a lot. And a lot of people don't realize is that you were behind the scenes that coordinated the whole three hundred. That's true. Right. Yep. Yeah. That was and a great. And that a was a huge year. experience, which now is carried on to Family Day. I know, yeah, and they are crushing it with, um, it, it with made Family Day. A legacy out of this, so it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what we hoped. I, that was I did my <laughs> my time, but I'm thrilled that other people, um, you know, picked it up and are carrying it on because it it was it's, it's just a great, a great community feeling. I love that it's on the same day as Poly Arts. Me I think too. that's really. Yeah. Um, exciting and you know it's just a day that a lot of people come back and look forward to and just yeah. you know so seeing each other catching up in Hopkinton it's great. So you've been really involved in the town. Coming yeah. on board with Live for Evan in October is right after they do their 5k. That's right. And then to launch into doing a gala and their first ever is a huge undertaking. Yeah. Um, yes, and in the in between, we've added a couple of programs. So they've they've been very busy. They have a lot going on. Um, but yeah, so we're having. They've wanted to do a gala for a while. So we're having our first annual red tie affair mm -hmm. on um, on Saturday, March third, at the Crystal Room in Milford. And this is only a week away. <clears throat> yes, it's only a week away. So if I look a little red, <laughs> I'm a little stressed. Red tie. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, but it, it, it'll be really fun. We're exciting. We're excited. Uh, we probably we're expecting about 200 people. Probably, although tickets are still um, being sold. And uh, it's going to be really, uh, I think, a fun event. We're trying to do some things that are a little bit different. We've all been to a lot of. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely gallas. going into gala season. So it's hard, yeah, it's hard to differentiate yourself, but um, they've wanted to do this for a while, so it's marking the end of Heart Month, February is Heart Month, so it's marking the end of Heart, heart Month and just kind of a big celebration of, of, and a thank you to people for supporting them for so long, um, but an exciting, <coughs> excuse me, announcement about what's coming down so the road. So let's back up. Let's <coughs> talk about the Live Forever mission mm -hmm. and all the wonderful things you guys do. We've had um, Mike Girardi mm -hmm. and Shane Lavoie on the show. A couple show, times. But, but it's always good to refresh on yeah. who you guys are and what you guys do. Well, mm -hmm. so Live for Evan was started um, by four of Evan's friends from high school. And they, um, they, well, they first started doing the 5K and really wanted to grow the organization and do something bigger um, in memory of, to, to honor Evan. And so they brought Evan's parents and some other adults on board. And so I think they officially incorporated it as a 501c3 in 2013, maybe. Um, they've done the race for five years, and they've done a variety of different things. But really, their mission now is to, pro to provide temporary housing for families who are traveling to Boston um, for congenital heart care for their children. And so uh, over the course of time, they've donated already about $100,000 to housing. 
Um, they have funded an apartment through Children's Hospital, but in June we will be opening our own independent apartment um, right down the street from Children's Hospital. So that's very exciting. There's more room for expansion by doing it that way and still um, gives us the ability to serve the same population. But we also were very excited. Um, we are starting, hopefully, next week, a new program with Tufts where we will provide shorter term um, housing through hotels, local hotels, for families who are staying at Tufts. So Tufts and Children's are the two places in Boston that have pediatric um, cardiac programs. Uh, Tufts does, it, it has a smaller program and they do different types of surgeries so people aren't here for the several months to a year sometimes that they are at Children's. So um, the hotel model I think will fit that that population a little bit better. And was this the first year, or have you in prior years also been doing the whole heart screening that Hopkinton just had it uh -huh. a couple of weeks ago? And, and um, So that actually, so this is a very dedicated bunch of people. That's actually a separate um, organization. So Shane Lavoy and Jack um, Nealon and Patrick Cusinelli, I'm not sure that's the right Cusinelli, there are a lot of them, Patrick or Tom Cusinelli um, founded Mass Heartbeat. Uh -huh. And so they did the screening. They actually donate a portion of their proceeds to Live Forever, but that's, um, that's, okay. a separate that's a separate thing. Although Live Forever had supported a different organization that was doing that a few years ago, and I think that's where the guys got the idea. So, <clears throat> so that's something that they are also doing. Um, separately but obviously you I mean know, it was the, tremendous to have it exactly. as a resource at the high school yeah so they had really they had a great day at the high school last Friday I think they screened over 115 kids seriously yeah so See, it's that's wonderful. fascinating yeah. when I first read that I thought typically you think about these screenings for older people exactly you know and so like I thought it was heart study right so mm -hmm. you know I thought it was uh, just brilliant that they you know I guess in, in tribute to what you know uh, well, Evan, and I think it's Gerard, not a yeah. part of uh, your regular physical for children, right. and so so much can be caught. And we all hear things in the news every day about the athletes. Olympic skier's brother yes. passed away this fall. Yeah. Um, you know, and they believe that was it, it just yeah. an it's undiagnosed yeah. congenital heart exactly. condition. Exactly, right. And a so, lot does go undiagnosed. So I think that's fantastic that they're absolutely. working hard to help people um, you know, detect things and earlier. And it ties in perfectly with Live Forever. It really just does, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Not just in terms of personnel, but also right, in terms right. of mission, right? Absolutely. So you've got the scale coming up yes. in a session week. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and where is it? It's at the Crystal Room in it, Milford. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the Leah uh, they had fundraiser. Had, so well. I, I know what the Crystal Room is. They mm -hmm. live for Leah. Was not the and same you thing. said tickets are still for sale? Yes, so tickets are still for sale. Um, the ticket prices just went up, unfortunately, ah. last, uh, last Tuesday to $85. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're and is still it, selling. It's a dinner dance or heavy it's, hors d'oeuvres? Um, heavy hors d'oeuvres, and uh, we have some fun games. We're trying to do a, a little bit different than the sort of traditional model. So we have some games, raffles, auction. Um, we actually will be debuting two new videos that we have created that um, you know sort of help us explain what the mission is. Uh, one that's a digital animation video, and the other one that's live action video that or not live action that's not the right word yeah. I'm not but uh, has real people in it um, <laughs> and so that includes Evan's family as well as um, Mike and Erica Schultz Ari mm -hmm. Schultz's parents mm -hmm. and another family um, from Connecticut as well as the do uh, doctor and some of the staff at Tufts okay. so it's great it really explains a lot more about the critical need for housing um, and you know wh why it's so important and and to support these families. I think Absolutely. I've also been impressed, and, you know, we've supported the 5K in the past, and when I've noticed, like, sponsoring things like that, to see how um, Evan's alumni, like a Loyola, still supports and yes. gives back. And yeah. um, I have a couple friends there, and there's actually, like, a plaque there at the school that is dedicated yes. to him. Yeah. And that, the, the, and um, they, have, they do things on the other campus. You know, it's it's 350 right. miles away to support yes. Live for Evans. Loyola place. was, a, 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 excuse me, was phenomenal um, supporting the family and, and has really remained in touch. There are a lot of people who are in, who volunteer um, 
on a very on a weekly basis for the um, organization who were friends of Evans from Loyola. So I remember when we when we participated in the one of the five Ks, and I was walking with a group of uh, young people, and they were all from Loyola, yeah. Yeah. not from Hopkinton. Yes, had no had, had no, no Evan. You yeah, know, a at whole school. lot of them yeah. come up to do um, yeah. to do the race. So that's wonderful. And um, one particular hero has run the the marathon I think for four years I, he just moved to LA so he's not running for us this year we do mm -hmm. we have four other runners so you have four numbers this year we do and are um, yeah and are they fundraising yes so they it, are so is if they go is the, the website live for Evan it's live for Evan dot org and the, it's the number four not yes four spelled the, live for number four Evan not right not written and out. so from there they can get tickets to the gala and can they find your runners there um, I'm not sure we have our runners posted yet. One of them, two of them have their fundraising pages set up, and the third one I don't think does yet, and the fourth one we're waiting to confirm today. <laughs> that he'll be so running. Um, what are their goals for? Um, so we have set a goal for them to raise $7,500 each. Wow. So That's it would be great. great. Um, yeah, and we also have runners running in the Falmouth Road Race for yeah. us. We have okay. a runner running in the Chicago Marathon. So I did have to be very clear in the contract negotiations that running was not included in my. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it is the only 5K I ever ran, but I am um, much better as a course marshal than as a runner. So yep, I understand. Yeah, that. <laughs> I got lapped at the end by two women that had walked the entire way. So I wow. felt that perhaps I walked most I should, of the way. <laughs> I well, I was actually running, and they still beat me. So <laughs> I thought I, I'll well, stand in direct traffic next year. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's my goal. Is shares to uh, to um, run a 5k to run the 5ks that I've been doing to really run them <laughs> yeah not, not <laughs> run walk and you watch and how long do I look like yeah. <laughs> yeah that's my goal so for the gala coming up yeah you know it's a week away is everyone asked to wear red? Um, I mean, you said men, black tie or red not tie. Yeah, a little because something about red. Wearing they're red. invited to wear red, um, and yeah. So, but certainly you don't have to. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're hoping that people will really embrace the color and the theme. We mm -hmm. wanted to make it red, um, you know, because of Heart Month and Heart Awareness. But um, and we wanted it to be, you know not as formal as a red I mean yeah. excuse me as, as a, a black, black tie mm -hmm. um, but to have some but, festive but to be fun to yeah so a, a little bit different it has flowers that's right yeah. very like yeah. and this is our logo that another one of the volunteers one of Evan's classmates designed oh, so for this the is logo our logo for the, for the for the for oh, the red yeah. tie that's, that's right. awesome so yeah. it takes their logo right. and incorporates it incorporates it into the little red tie yes so so she's very clever this inaugural gala um is it mostly kind of local uh, families attending or it doesn't have a broader reach with people coming? We do have um, a lot of people from the area who have been involved in the organization for a long time who are attending but we also um, have some of the staff from Tufts who are coming, some of our right. sponsors, the managers of the apartment building where we will be renting our apartment are coming. Mm. So um, yeah we're really hoping to draw a, a broad base of people okay. Um, okay. to the celebration. Now do you guys have an office space now? Um, the office space would be the couch in my dining room. <laughs> it works. Yeah, um, it's very convenient. That's a great my commute. commute is excellent. <laughs> yes, my, I share an office with my dog. Um, so, no. I remember when you had the little horses. You oh, know, yes. You, yeah, she not had anymore. miniature horses at her front lawn. Really? Well, and yes. you yeah. are, let's, we didn't really go into, a lot of times we asked our guests to talk a little bit more about themselves. Oh, goodness. You are an expert quilter. I am, that's true. Oh, right. Well, I don't know if I'm an expert. I am uh, a well, prolific. Okay. I, I, I have been doing it for a long time. Well, you're talented. And you and know, the HCA done. had the quilt show, and I yes. hope they have it again. Goodness. Yes, we they are will. having it in September. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was blown away at the artistry and the just the sheer magnitude of these quilts, and you are right in there with, yes. your, with your beautiful... Well, um, that was such a beautiful... We've yeah. had our quilt shows there. Show. We've yeah. had 10 yeah. in the 20 years. Mm -hmm. We've had them always in the house, so this yeah. was the first time we were able to do it in the barn. And the venue it, is, the venue. I mean, you could put anything up there and it would look amazing. It's <laughs> yeah. just so beautiful to see it all hanging but from the beams. That's when I first understood that, that you were such a talented quilt oh, artist. I well, mean, but wow, just thank thank beautiful. You. Thank you so yeah. much. Well, that's my you hobby. That's so how we all have them. something to do to relax. So, yeah. that, did you grow up in the area? No, I grew up all over the country, but really? my my father's family is from Western Mass, and they've lived in the same 
on the same piece of property for 300 and something ever something wow. years. So so yeah, when did you move years. to Huffington? We've been here for 26 years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So all your kids grew up that's here. That's right. And, and so. so was your father in the service that you moved around a lot? No, my father was a banker. There's no <laughs> reasonable explanation as to why we moved so frequently. <laughs> we just did. Your family so. was like changed, <laughs> kind of like ours. We didn't move far, but we moved around a lot. Yeah. And changed schools a lot. Yeah. Yes, and we, we did yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes, and I we never, never learned moved. my 11 and 12 yeah. times tables because it was you in know what? fourth grade one place and fifth grade I never place learned fractions I, yes, because see? of that. You have we these all have gaps. Adapt. Exactly. You know, it's kind of strange. It, but I think you learn a lot of uh, resilience and being able to jump into situations and people yeah. when you have to just start making friends because you, you, you know, you're, you're new. I was a new kid all the time. And so, you know, integrating into situations became a skill that mm -hmm. you learn. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, it's Absolutely. a good skill so to have as an adult. Long-term vision. You've moved around a lot. You've seen other cities. Do you see the Live Forever model where you guys can expand it into other areas? I mean, that would be wonderful. I think, you know, arguably Children's Hospital is the place that people come from all, all the over the world yeah. um, for groundbreaking surgery. and. So I think Boston is the best place to start, yeah, and right. certainly mm -hmm. that's why the Girardis moved here. They moved here to be, they moved here oh, they from actually, California. they actually moved here? They, they were in Southern California. That's where, right, where their city of hope. born, and ah. um, they moved to Boston to be close to Children's Healthcare. Hospital. Yeah, um, I mean, really? I, well, I didn't yeah. have so, my son. Uh, we're friends. Yes, you know, yeah. And then, yeah, Barbara had told that story. They moved here. Um, because, because of Evan's care. condition? It, yes, he was their oldest, the and they just said, you know, we got to be go where there. the health care is the best. Wow. And so, yeah. yeah. And the surgery that eventually that Evan had didn't even exist when he no. was born. And so, you know, so at any rate, I think to your point, yeah. Boston is, is definitely the place the to start. But we're very excited about this idea of this sort of a new concept around the hotels. Yes. Um, and that's um, that will be a lot more flexible in terms of accommodating people for a shorter mm -hmm. term. You I know, know John Hopkins does that with does, um, do with cancer patients. There are like actually oh. regional hot hotels mm -hmm. right along that. Yeah, um, there are tons. I'm learning. There are tons of organizations that provide patient housing, and some are um, not specific. There's hospitality homes in Boston, yes. um, but then there are also that are some that are very specific, like Cam Neely House, where. Um, mm -hmm. There's a Chris Christopher's Haven that's for a particular program at Mass General, and they're located right across the street. And so, so ours is, is cardiac specific. But what we've learned through Children's Hospital, Children's Hospital itself houses about 3,500 families per year mm -hmm. um, for the hospital. And of that, I think they said 36% are cardiac patients, wow. families. Mm -hmm. um, so, which is a lot. And then I think the next highest percentage of any particular program is 9%. So the heart wow. center really um, is, is so the focus of the need. need. Mm -hmm. So, you know, beyond that, they had, I think, another thousand requests for, for um, housing that they couldn't accommodate. Okay. So, you know, and, and yeah. cardiac families will often stay for several months oh, at a time. There's a family in our apartment right now that's, I think they've been there for eight months or nine months mm -hmm. um, and don't always have a specific. So um, what about home is sharing? Is that an option? Or is that anything so you that consider? So that is what Hospitality Homes does. That's yeah. a model that they have. And, um, you know, certainly we'll be working with all of the other organizations to refer mm -hmm. people. Um, we're meeting today with Ronald McDonald House, Boston I was thinking Children's about Harvard. individuals, you know, not Airbnb, but yes, sort of the similar that's thing. That's exactly what you know. Hospitality Homes oh, does. Oh, which is like uh, Why Me Sherry's House in Worcester. Mm -hmm. does a lot like mm -hmm. that. Right. Where their, their, their children are at UMass Medical Center in St. Vincent's. Mm -hmm. And Why Me Sherry's House Halls is a lot of the moms who are there while their kids are getting cancer treatments in Worcester. Yeah. 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 So the apartment that we found is literally two blocks away from That's Children's the Hospital, yeah. so mm -hmm. it's great. There's a, a grocery store nearby, there's a CVS nearby, mm -hmm. you know, it has parking available if people need it. That's a huge thing. Sure. So, I mean, you guys have lived here as long as I have, mm -hmm. and you know how expensive oh and hard to God. find housing yes. is in Boston. Yes. And when yes. you don't know how long you're going to be there, right. it's very difficult. So the well, ability to take the stress off the parents of mm -hmm. the logistics of finding a, a right. place to be and paying for it is, you know, that's really what so that's Revan wants to provide. The, so that the, the cost, the, the, so that's part of it, is that? Yes. So does a whole family move, or is it one parent, or do they bring children? It's really, it's really on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, you know, sometimes you'll have just one parent come, or other times, 
I had a meeting with Boston Children, I mean, excuse me, Ronald McDonald House a few months ago, and um, they said that they do have families come to them. All the kids come, and they actually enroll in the Boston the schools. schools. That's They're right. going to be there the for school. a long time. So, um, you know, we haven't managed the apartment ourselves yet, and I think that we're going to learn a lot about that. We'll start with one. Um, but this building that we're working with has been phenomenal, very, very welcoming, very excited to work with us. And um, so we have the ability to grow to several more apartments over time. Yes. And um, so Wonderful. we'll start a little slow so we can manage, you know, because crit the most important thing is to make sure that you're providing a, a safe and secure and supportive environment for people. So we want to. And having those creature comforts when you're looking like, well, they're in walking distance of the CVS, they can get to a grocery store, they can get to a Subway or a McDonald's, all matters. Yes. Right. Well, and, and so we were, you know, I don't know if it'll make it into the video or not, but we were, when we were interviewing the Schultzes for the video, um, Erica Schultz was saying, you know, oftentimes the only time she went outside was when she would walk from the hospital to the apartment they were staying in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just gave her an opportunity to take a breath and collect her thoughts and just a little mm -hmm. bit of a break and moving a little bit wasn't very right. hard that she had to walk but um, you know she said you just kind of you get so wrapped up in being in the hospital and you really don't even know what time of day it right. is right. and um, so the ability to have a home base that you can go and and just take a shower or I know they lost the garden this year Children's, the party garden that had been oh. there for years. Oh, yeah. My nephew actually lives at Children's yeah, a great deal for his, his, yeah. for his issues. And um, they live in Stoughton, so they literally will like the parents crash on like the hospital floor and stuff like that. Yeah, know? well, and that that's what's happening a lot at Tufts in particular um, when they're able to, when the social workers are able to get. Um, a free night or a reduced cost night at a hotel they they do try to do that but they don't have funding for it and that's what we'll be providing mm -hmm. but they do have parents sleeping in the waiting room or sleeping in their car because yeah. they don't want to go all the way well, home and right. they need to be close by and for their when babies my daughter had her surgery at children's she was there for nights yeah and they had the little window seat bed and the chair that went out and they were completely embracing I was a lot I stayed I stayed the yes, whole time yeah, I spent, of course. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Of course. yeah and you know I was fortunate I lived close and it was only four nights and you can only imagine these families we're well, coming from out child, of town this is where you want to be mm -hmm. you want to do everything you can so yeah, yeah like the uh, yeah. So, so what a great organization you guys are awesome what's you. your what's the uh, organization's operating budget now um, well, we're hoping to fundraise for about $150,000 this okay. year, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. will provide, um, you know, all of the housing that we want to do and yeah. um, some opportunity for expansion. Well, it's a relatively new nonprofit, mm -hmm. actually. So yeah, building is. up. And, so and you're the only full time. You're the only staff person. I'm, I'm the only staff person. I'm mm -hmm. not full time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you get into an apartment, are you also then having to go out and get the furnishings, the yes. decor? Pots and pans, towels, yes, exactly. all that. Although Which is, that's a that's that's up. It, it does. Although I will say, just a stroke of blind luck that when we were touring the apartment building over the Christmas holidays, the building manager mentioned to me that there's a company that a lot of people in the building use that they lease their furniture. So I sent them an email and just said, you know, and I sent an email to a bunch of other furniture companies, just saying, you know, would you donate to this? We're trying to um, furnish an apartment and. I thought, you know, they would send a couch or a chair or a lamp or something. The next day, I got an email back saying, we will fully furnish your apartment for you for a year. Wow. All you have to do is bring a toothbrush. And so Barbara Girardi has gotten the toothbrushes donated, and we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready for the day. So we, uh, we wow. were shocked, oh just really overwhelmed by the generosity. But, um, but who's that wonderful sponsor? That sponsor is Court Furniture. Awesome. Um, and yeah. so they do a lot of leasing in Boston for mm -hmm. furniture. And then um, as it happens, the person in the organization that was assigned to our account actually grew up in Hopkinton. Oh. So, so wow. there are just a so lot they, of yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got yeah. chills. Somehow, the, you know, there just, just the, are a lot of yeah, connections. Just a absolutely. Lot of yeah. Absolutely. That's, yeah. That's, so cool. That's, That's wonderful. So cool. So, and so behind the scenes between the gala, it, you, as soon as the gala ends, you've got the okay. marathon runners to yes. manage, mm -hmm. yep. fundraise, recognize, all that. And then it really runs into summer and getting 
them the ready budget. for the 5K. Yes. In between, you must be writing grants. And yes, so we do need to um, start working on grants more, and we need to gear up, get ready all of our ducks in a row to open the apartment. We we're targeting June 1st for that, okay. so mm -hmm. um, right in between the, um, the gala and the... Um, Marathon? 5K. 5K, yeah. <laughs> oh, right, and the marathon. <laughs> the marathon. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they're, they, they've gone from sort of a, you know, a single event-based group to a full-time um, organization with full-year programming in a short period of time. It's a great group of people, and I have to say one of the things that really drew me to it was it, it's a very multi-generational board, and yeah. so yes. the opportunity to work with people my own age who I know yes, and who yes. I've who have a lot of great experience, but also to, I have learned so much from the younger people yes. on the on the board mm -hmm. who are Evan's um, friends, friends and the passion and that they have, and just the opportunity to work with sort of the next generation of philanthropists is very inspiring to me. They're very talented, very passionate. I'm glad you're saying that because, you know, statistically in, the, in Massachusetts, the number of individuals under 40 years old that are involved in nonprofits is minuscule, yeah. you know, and uh, you know, an opportunity to bring in, you know, young people, millennials, into into these, and, and they want to. I mean, there's something oh, culturally yeah. about this age group. Um, and you're seeing it more and more, activism and philanthropy, and I think it's wonderful that you're tapping. Well, of course, the organization, the, the, the fundraising was founded and by that age. It. Yeah, yeah, no, they're very inspiring, and I, I have learned a lot from them, and not just about technology. <laughs> <laughs> it's feeling like they, they're part of a social enterprise, yeah. and that, you know, it's yeah. social philanthropy of how like they build their lives their time you know that you know they could be their off hours you know shooting pool and having a beer or I can do have a beer and be like giving back doing yeah. something yeah. and Absolutely. creating these opportunities I've seen more and more yeah no it's wonderful they're remarkable yeah. so as we wind down okay again yeah. what's the website how do you get tickets okay so liveforevan.org um, there is a link to tickets on the website. You can donate on the website. If our marathon runners are not on there yet, they will be shortly. We also have a Facebook page that has all of the details. Awesome. That's Live for Evan as well. And as you said, Ooh, it's a four, not F-O-R. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you all Cheers. very much. Yeah. Thank you for having and me. Congrats. Thank you, Good luck. Congratulations. See you, Thank you. Gala. See you at the Gala. Really <laughs> I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H Camp. Hey, I like to be a camp. We love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. And I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV.